Hello, everyone. My guest today is David Beniolio. He is the CEO and founder of a company called Real Content Network, and he spent the last 25 years at the intersection of technology and marketing as a software designer, marketer, salesman, project manager, executive, and you know how it is. You wear all the hats when you're launching stuff. He's a startup junkie and loves creating new things. David, are you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. All right. What does Real Content Network do, and how do you make money? All right, so Real Content Network works with both publishers, big publishers, digital publishers, and um, advertisers to deliver native campaigns, content, premium content in a lot of cases, um, at scale. So, um, the, so, my, my, so the insight that I'd had as a marketer, so back on the client side, was that to you know getting past banners and even getting past uh, video advertising. Um, you know, the next generation for me as an, as a marketer was native. And, you know, I would always be, we, we, in the past, we call it integrated campaigns, custom campaigns, branded whatever you want. Branded content. Branded content. And that was a real tedious process from both a strategy perspective. So you'd have to go in and build custom content itself. And, and actually administratively, it was really difficult. You'd have to find, you know, you know, a sales operation where people have to go and meet with these publishers, nail out a deal. And those deals were across the board. They, you know, they were, you had some performance elements to it. You had CPM elements, you had some flat fee. And then, and then you have to go and contract it. And, and there's just no scale to it. It was just extremely hard to take some piece of content and really distribute it. So um, that was the vision uh, of sort of bringing the two parts together. Um, and you know, it's, it's still, you know, it's still early days for native. Um, I would say, I think, I think publishers and advertisers are still trying to figure it out. Um, for the most part, the industry tends to cycle back into a simple way to programmatically right now, programmatic is a massive wave of, of, um, there's a big, there's a huge move to programmatic mechanisms for buying media and managing managing media so it's sort of starting to fall back into sort of a programmatic mode so david what's uh, what's your model though what do you how are you built uh, so the way that we built is we take technology we have um some of our our own technology to help what we do is we package content and we we, we kind of put it together with with great advertising whether it's pre-roll video or display style advertising and we bring those two pieces together to our publisher partners. Is so it a SaaS example, model or is it performance based, like percentage of spend kind of thing? The publishers themselves make a percentage. It's, it's a, a typically a rev share scenario for a publisher. So someone like uh, post media here in, in Canada has um, our code on page and essentially we're packaging together um, content or premium content plus great revenue opportunities. And we bring that to them. Um, because ultimately they can't scale native on their own. Um, and our value prop is that we go to advertiser and, and give them 10, 15, 30, so, 50 sites at once. So your key metric that you're looking at is not, you know, you know, you know, fixed SaaS revenue month over month. It's more like what's your total transaction volume, total spend you're processing each month. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Okay. It's all based on gro gross, gross revenues from from our advertising partners. And what do you, I know this probably changes and every deal is different with all the partners, but on average, I mean, are you taking, you know, a, a percent, a 10%, 50%, what are you taking out of the spend? Um, it's a little bit different than your typical display business where those, those margins are very small. We, anywhere from 50 to call it, anywhere from 50 to 30% is what we see. Um, you take and, like 30 to 50% of every dollar yeah, that goes through. I will take 50 to 30%. A lot of that comes down to how much of our technology platform that publisher is really leveraging. David, are you saying one five to 30%? No, five, zero, five, zero to 30 to 50. Yeah. That, that makes more sense. 30 to 50. I didn't know why you were saying 50 to 30%. It's going backwards. 30 yeah, to kind of Okay. Dating. I didn't know that. Okay. So 30 to 50% is what you're taking. So just to be clear, if somebody puts, you know, you know, a million dollars through you, you're going to take between 300,000 and 500,000 yourself of right. that for packaging the content in the first place. Packaging content, technology, obviously we run a technology operation for just sort of pulling it all together. Got it. Okay. And give me a sense of, of kind of growth. So when did you launch the company? Launched in uh, 2015. Okay. Um, through 2015, it's interesting. So obviously you can imagine there were some piv some pivots. Right. So at our first iteration, um, we were we were trying to match. We were putting advertisers directly into a marketplace with these publishers. And then we would try to get them working together. 
um, that the growth model there, we didn't find that was, it wasn't really moving fast enough. And you know, advertisers weren't sophisticated enough to create and package these things on their own. So um, it was relatively slow, maybe uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000, $150,000 in revenue in the first year um, and call it. That's in transaction volume or your cut? That's in transaction transaction volume. But that's just first year is piloting, right? We're just yeah. getting started. So you did like call it 40 to 60 grand that year in revenue for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and today, so now we're into, into 2017, also into 18, we're on uh, the neighborhood of 150 websites and um, transact somewhere in the neighborhood, call it 100 million page views a month and generate over $300,000 a month or so, $400,000 a month in in gross earnings that are running through the platform. So, um, so what, is, what does that mean? Like, do I take 300 grand times 30% to get your cut? Yeah. That, that would be, that'd be an interest that, that'd be a good number. Okay, so you're doing about, and that's monthly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So you're doing about 90 grand a month. Yep. Yeah. That's great. Yep. Interesting. And what's the team size today? We are six people. Okay. Where's, and uh, where's home? All plus, Canada? Plus, yeah. All in Canada. There's um, I have a partner. His name is John. He handles the biz dev side of it. I handle uh, ad ops and product for the most part. Uh, there's some ad ops people and uh, one person who handles content for the most part. There's a lot of work to be done there. And we actually outsource some of our development as well in uh, um, basically in uh, different parts of the world, actually. And, and have you bootstrapped or have you raised? Bootstrap. Great. That's good. Fully bootstrap. A couple of friends helped out, but I mean, for the most part, it's uh, no real, nothing, nothing substantial in terms of funding. And what's growth rate look like? So December 2017, you'll do about 90 grand this month based off 300,000 going through your platform. Take me back 12 months, December 2016. What were those numbers? Last year, this time, about a third of that. Okay. So about 30 grand per month on, call it 100 grand in volume? Yeah. That's great. And how many publishers, how many customers are you working with now? So we're working with 150 publishers right now. Sorry. Yeah, you said that. Okay. That's what yeah, I meant. Which is really interesting. I mean, I would say at 150 sites that generate real traffic. So when publishers themselves are, there's, there's aggregate, there's groups, right? This Our sweet spot, what we found is... Um, Somewhere in the middle of sort of not a long tail, but sort of mid to long tail publishers. The, l- the larger publishers um, have some. You know, they have, there's challenges in getting in, getting engaged with them, and they have. They're still working with their own native strategy. So what they what their editors want to do is sort of still sell their own voice through any native opportunities that they're running through, but they do take some of our opportunities on board. So they will take some of the opportunities we bring to them. But the guys who are sort of day to day are in that mid tail, mid or you know smaller sized. Makes a lot of sense. Hey, listen, let's uh, wrap up here with the famous five day bed. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, probably uh, uh, Zorba the Greek. Zorba the Greek. Okay, number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Yeah, I just finished. Uh, I just finished reading Elon Musk's book, which is, which is a really interesting book. It's kind of a, a massive eye opener in terms of how he get stuff done. That is a, a very spirited discussion about how, whether he's more a visionary or an execution guy. And I would lean more towards, you know, I, I just see the way, the way he made stuff, make stuff happen is brilliant. You know, number three, what's your favorite online tool today? Yeah. I would say Google, I'm mean, having a ton of fun with it. From a product perspective, I probably love full story. It's a great tool. I think it's like one of these amazing tools that lets you see what people are doing whenever you release product to market. It's kind of very interesting. Um, and the whole Google suite is just, you know, it just works for me. You know, it just makes life so easy. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, depends on what I ate that night. I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six. Okay. Got it. So call it five and a half ish. And what's your situation? Yeah. Married, single, you have kids. Married, three kids. Okay, and how old, how old are you, David? I'm I'm 47 years old. 47. Last question. Take us back 27 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? You know, I wish I knew what I you know the one mistake that I that I made a couple three times probably was doing too much at once. You know, I think just trusting yourself and your ability and just uh, not having a plan B is the only way to really succeed. Um, you always sort of tend to create some kind of backstop opportunity where if this fails, you can always be doing that. And I think from, from a success perspective, you really can't have that mentality. 
And I think that's probably, I probably wasted a lot of time, uh, double, you know, second guessing myself. And I, and, and I, and I could save myself probably a good 10 years. Um, if, if I hadn't done that quite as much. Burn the boats, cut the safety nets, leave no other option, says David. Yeah. Again, launched the Real Content Network back in 2015, did about 100 grand in volume through his platform as an ad tech platform. He takes about 30 to 50% each year. They grew that in 2016 to about, oh, about 30 grand a month in revenue on about 100 grand in volume. And then fast forward to now, December 2017, doing about 300 grand in volume each month, taking about 90 grand for themselves as they invest with their team of six people up there in Canada in building out the tech to make this a more, uh, more more efficient process, really packaging custom branded content to these publishers. They're working with 150 of them right now. Totally bootstrapped. David, thank you for taking us to the top. Great, Heath. Great, man. Great meeting you. Thanks for, thanks for reaching out. Have a great day.